2020, which is a regular board meeting. This meeting is being called to order. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I don't like the things that go on. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First of all, we'd like to thank each and every one of you for coming out this evening. Feel free to come on down so you're not so distant <laughs> away. Uh, so I see our board clerk has done some changes. I, um, I guess she listened to Mr. Stanford about keeping us on the stage, and uh, we come here, and uh, a whole nother, a whole nother uh, setup is here. So I don't know if uh, you would like to comment on anything regarding that. Uh, but uh, this is this is different. I would like to know board input though regarding the the setup because it's it's uh, it's unique and different for us. Um, however, um, for the board of clerk, <laughs> you've been you've been taking care of a lot of things. I see the website has also changed. I'm on our board page, and then I see board docs has also changed. So um, so it's quite interesting. Uh, at this time, we're going to um, go right into our citizens' comments. Good evening, Madam President, uh, Golly Stanford, 181 Marshall Road, Madam President, uh, 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 Trustees, Dr. Superintendent, uh, two very quick things. Uh, the first is I'm joined here this evening uh, by Alan Steno, who is the Secretary of the Poughkeepsie Public Schools Foundation. First of all, we want to thank you very much, Dr. Russer, for making a link on your page and although I've been a little neglectful, you will have that copy first thing in the morning. It has been approved, so we're really grateful for that. Uh, the second is that uh, there has been really a very gratifying response uh, to the appeal for funding to support the lights programs, uh, and we have, I think, taken in about uh, $4,000 towards our goal of 10,000, which will be matched by another 10,000 uh, from the um, uh, uh, from an anonymous donor. So we're very excited about that, and actually we are in a position to distribute funds in the support of uh, Saturday Morning Lights whenever you're ready to um, uh, identify uh, items that you feel uh, the foundation uh, can be supporting in, in order to make that uh, a great success. Well, thank you very much for that. We, we are hopeful and we know how busy everybody is, but we are, are hopeful if possible to get a, a list of the vendors um, so that we can uh, uh, approach them. And then I don't know um, if you keep um, lists of, uh, or, or if there is a way to communicate, because we want to respect privacy, of course, but if there is a way to communicate uh, with retirees from em uh, uh, employment in the district, uh, many of whom in the past and in other uh, public school foundations have been very supportive uh, of the foundation. So if that's a possibility, we would love uh, to explore that. So thank you very much for your encouragement. We really appreciate that the president has come, the vice president uh, has come, and, uh, and, and of course, Dr. Rosser, we greatly appreciate uh, that. Also, and we're looking forward to appointing, we hope, a teacher to the board uh, before too long, so we have a full compliment. So that's the Public School Foundation, and then a personal uh, disclosure. Uh, I just wanted to let you know, uh, trustees, Madam President, uh, that um, I have put my hat in the ring uh, for, I believe it's called an election, but it's essentially it's the nomination to the vacancy on um, the BOCES uh, board of Trustees. Um, I think you know, um, probably you've heard more often than you need to hear from me about my passion for career technical education. And if any of you listened to the State uh, of the um, uh, State of the Union last night, uh, we're expecting additional funding for career and technical uh, to be coming uh, uh, from the uh, federal level. 
So um, I, I, I beg you for your favorable consideration. It will be my pleasure uh, to serve, although I am a Hyde Park uh, district resident, uh, it will be my great pleasure to serve the students of Poughkeepsie City School District as well as all the students of the county. But I think you know that my passion uh, is to level the playing field and to be a champion for the students of Poughkeepsie City Schools. And I've gone over time, I do apologize. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. Snainel, I just wanted to say, I, actually, it was my intention <clears throat> to, uh, to send an email that I was out of town. I literally just got it back in town, so I could not make the meeting on Monday, but it was my intention to send an email that I would not be able to make it, so I apologize. Oh, okay, I wasn't sure. It's, it's all running together. <laughs> okay, thank you. Are there further citizens' comments? There being none, we're going to move to our superintendent's report. Good evening, community and board members. There's been a lot of activity throughout the district on a number of different fronts. One of the things that we would like to highlight this evening is activity that's happened around our smart school bonds um, project. Um, I have asked Ms. Rabinowitz, who has been leading this project, to provide an update. So, Ms. Rabinowitz. Good evening. Thank you, Dr. Rosser. This evening, it gives me great pleasure. This is something that's been a year in the making, and we're very excited to give you an update about the Smart Schools Bond Act um, for the Poughkeepsie City School District. Um, tonight's presentation is meant to be a 10,000-foot view of what the Smart Bond Act is, all the action that has been going into the planning, um, and what it means for the Poughkeepsie City School District. So I'm going to give this to Chris. Okay, Might be a battery situation. Okay, great. Thank you. So this evening, I'm going to give you, again, 10,000 foot overview of the smart bond, the preconditions. What that means is what the district must have in place before we can apply for the smart bond, the planning actions, all the work that went into where we are today, uh, the district technology plan goals, which have to be aligned with the Smart Schools Bond Act, so we'll go over that. Uh, the district technology priority areas, where we'd like to spend our money in, and then our next steps. Chris, if you could advance the next slide. Great. So, high level overview. Governor Cuomo called for New York State voters to invest $2 billion in schools through a Smart Schools Bond Act. The voters approved the Smart Schools Bond Act, and as a result, and this is important, the Poughkeepsie City School District is allocated to receive $5,708,639. Now, we're allocated to receive it, but we must apply for it. Preconditions. All New York State public school districts are required to complete and submit a district instructional technology plan. We did that last year, so we've met that precondition. Another precondition is we must ensure there's adequate internet bandwidth in our district. And we have had an assessment, and we do meet that precondition as well. Okay. Most importantly, the planning actions. And the work that went into this was a variety of teams. It was the district, because we surveyed teachers, students, and staff. It was the technology committee. It was the technology department. Um, our technology committee has 27 people on it. It's comprised of parents, community members, students, and staff. We really wanted the opportunity to have students on the committee, and the students brought a lot of their own voice of what they'd like to see. Also what went into it is we did an assessment 
of our instructional and technical technology. What that means is I met with the technology department. We have a great technology department. They told us the pain points. They've been living it. They let us know really what's occurring. I went out to the buildings, met with the building administrators. They told us the needs. Then there was also obviously professional development. We haven't had a lot of professional development for our teachers and our staff and our administrators in technology. And when we did that survey, it showed. So that was the data the committee used to create the smart bond plan and the technology plan. Those surveys that went out were in English and Spanish. Uh, we sent them out a few times last fall. Um, fall, not this school year, but the previous school year. We also collaborated with all the central administration. So it wasn't just the building administrators, we also wanted to hear from facilities, security, curriculum, business office, family and st student support services. The other additional thing we did is we met with vendors. Vendors, of course, they could sell us anything, but we used our committee and our staff to not only have demonstrations in-house, but we went out and we looked at other school districts to really see things in action. Um, and they, one of them did an assessment for our security technology, where they came in and they really told us truly what we need because in the event of emergency, we want everything integrated. Right now, our systems are not integrated. We also made recommendations for restructuring our district technology department. Again, a wonderful department, but as we know, when we move ahead, we want to be able to support our staff and students and teachers as equipment and materials come in. We drafted the instructional technology plan, which I spoke about, and we drafted the Smart Bond, excuse me, the Smart Schools Bond Act. Chris, thank you. Okay. When we met with the committee, we took all that data, all the discussions, all the feedback, and these were the five goals that are, that are overarching goals. Goal one, provide a robust foundation infrastructure. What does that mean? Make sure we have a reliable network, network that isn't gonna go down in places and buildings that don't have wireless. They may have a hardwire network, but not wireless. Make sure it's there. That was one of our goals. Again, professional development. Loud and clear from the data, professional development. Student learning, we know that that's what it's about. Equipment means nothing. It's how it's gonna impact students. But we know in order to impact student learning and technology integration, we have to have the equipment. So that was a third goal. Fourth goal, very important, provide adequate, equitable, and continuing planning. So in other words, we have eight buildings. We wanna make sure that when the technology comes in, it just doesn't go to this building or that building. It's across the board. And continuing planning for sustainability of this instructional technologies and the staffing. And last but not least, goal five, families and the community. Okay. We want to establish partnerships with the community, with other organizations. In New York State, across the state, across the country, and actually outside the country. What can we do to connect our students, the Kipsey School students, to other students? Chris, if you can advance to the next slide. Okay, so I just shared the goals with you. Now, that $5 million that I mentioned to you, there are different areas that you can apply for monies for. So based on all the assessment we did, our technology goals, there are three areas where we would like to spend the money on. One, school connectivity. That's a module in the Smart Schools Investment Act. I just indicated to you that that's a need, so that's where we want to spend a portion of our money. Next, classroom technology. We really want to be a one-to-one -one school district where all, all our students have devices and can access them. There's also the ability to bring your own device, and that can be built in for students who might have devices. And we're also, uh, Dr. Rosser and I are working on a grant 
for a Sprint Million Dollar Grant to provide internet access to students who might need it in the high school level. And then we're seeking other resources for other grades. Lastly, another component, again, where we want to spend our money is that high tech security features that I mentioned to you earlier. So when we went and we visited, what did we see? We saw school districts that, of course, safety is number one for our students and their students, but their systems were connected. So if there was an emergency and different things needed to happen, meaning school messengers would go, go out uh, to parents, doors would lock, systems would be integrated, um, the ID swipe system would shut down, all those various pieces of a security technology, and we can do a demonstration for you. Dr. Rosser or his designee, Mr. Hodge or whoever it is, could push a button and everything is integrated across, across the district. And schools that have interactive displays in their classrooms, messages would go on the displays in an alert system so that every, much like a college campus, everyone knows what's in place, what they need to do, whatever the pieces are. So that's the high tech security features and the smart bond allows for that. Chris, thank you. So the next steps. So again, this was a 10,000 foot view. We'd like, we, as a part of the smart bond requirement, we have to do a public hearing, and Dr. Rosser and I would like to do it on March 4th, where I would come and give more details. And that would, in that plan, would really be all the specific details in regard to where we are, to, where I spoke, what I spoke about today. Uh, purchase plan. So once we have the public hearing, then we can start submitting our purchase plans. They're called Smart Schools Investment Plans. So for each of those areas that I told you about, the school connectivity, the classroom technology, and the smart bonds, oh, excuse me, the high tech security, we would submit plans to New York State. Once they're approved, then the district would be able to purchase the equipment it would come in, it would be inventoried, and then it would be able to be implemented in place. So that's kind of how it works in regard to those pieces. Um, professional development, that's the one thing the smart bond does not cover. Uh, the district would be responsible for doing that, and we have thoughts and plans in our technology plan around professional development, but that is a key piece. We don't wanna just give equipment. We want to make sure the teachers are trained. Uh, provisions and distribution timeline would be based on when the equipment comes in. But soon as we're awarded, we purchase, comes in, and then we can put things in place. Sustainability, I mentioned it to you, but I'll just re reinforce it again. As we move ahead and we bring all this technology in, we want to make sure that the equipment is always in working order that teachers do not have to worry if the equipment isn't working, the internet isn't working. Um, so we wanna make sure we have a plan for sustaining it. And last but not least, I would just like to acknowledge, Chris, if you can go to the next slide, the Board of Education, oops, <laughs> that was quick, the Board of Education and Dr. Rosser for all their support. Last year, and Dr. Rosser this year, we're bringing it back to the forefront. I'd also like to acknowledge the Technology Committee, and Chris has a slide just with all of their names, because they really did work very hard um, to get to where we are today. And you see it's a representatives, teachers, teaching assistant, community members, administrators, parents, students. And then we had subcommittees. Last year, we had a website subcommittee. We knew we needed a revamp for our website. We knew that, and the technology committee started working on that. Uh, we were able to make a recommendation to um, our superintendent at the time to hire a public information officer to help, and I'm glad that that has come together because we know that, as Dr. Rosser is doing, telling those great stories, 
and we know it relates to our website, Instagram, Facebook. So I want to commend the committee for starting it, and now it's continued. We also had a policy committee, which worked on updating some policies with Kate Reed, our school attorney. And we had an ed tech camp committee. Uh, that, unfortunately, we didn't run that last year due to funding and the changeover of administration. But that was something that was dedicated for a week long for teachers to take professional development and with something we'd like to see in the future. And lastly, the Smart Bond Committee, which was everybody on the Technology Committee. And I think Chris just had some pictures. Just to go through, just our committee working, and they met about five times, once an hour after school, two days were half days, and two days were full days. And they developed the in-depth technology plan, the full Smart Bond plan, um, and the abbreviated version of the tech plan. And that's it. And thank you very much. I don't know if you have any questions. Thank you very much, Ms. Rabinowitz. Board members, do you have any questions related to our Smart School Bonds Act update? Um, I just have one uh, comment. So I am on the um, technology committee, but I have not received any minutes. So I, even though I'm on the committee and I know that the meetings typically happen, were at least last year they happened during the, the school day, so I wasn't able to attend them, um, but I have not received any minutes on it, so I didn't even have any idea that this was going on. So thank you for letting me know that. So um, we did provide the minutes last year, and I'm sorry that you did not receive them, but we do have copies, and we will make sure you get them. Okay. And this year, we only met one so far. Dr. Rosser had asked us to reconvene, and we can re we can't speak, I'm sorry. We reconvened last month, and it was just to look at what had already been put out to see if there were any changes. But we'll make sure as we move ahead, absolutely. And are, and are you still meeting during the school day or are you meeting after school now? Uh, that day we met during the school day, but the schedule hasn't been set. Okay. And I'll work with Dr. Rosser on that. And we would love for you to, to come to that. Okay. We can work around your schedule. Because most of the, the meat of the tech plan and all that has been done. Mm -hmm. So when we meet now, it could be after school. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm concerned. Um, one of the next steps, it says professional development. You mentioned yes. that there are no dollars in professional de development. Um, that's alarming for me because um, <clears throat> I know that professional development is usually um, costly. Sure. And especially if you're going to have high quality uh, professional development. So. What are, what are your considerations regarding that um, specific to next steps around professional development? So thank you for asking that. So that is something we did give a lot of thought at. And you know, it would be something, of course, we would work with Dr. Rosser as we move ahead. But we do have a lot of talented individuals in our own district, a lot of our teachers and technology staff myself included, who could do a lot of professional development. We also currently have and will continue to have model schools days from our BOCES. It's already purchased. They would come in and they can provide professional development. And then as we move ahead, we can continue to look at grants. So there's all ways to do it. And one example, even though the SMART Bond does not specifically cover professional development, when packages when you purchase equipment, staff development could be built into the purchase. So some of it, it's just built in. It's not something that's specifically there, but there's ways to do it as well. So we've been thinking a lot about that because we do recognize there isn't money, but we still will move ahead. We know how to do that lemons to lemonade. Yeah, and, um, and as, you, as you're aware, <clears throat> that, that piece is pivotal. But the Poughkeepsie Absolutely. City School District you know, we've had um, uh, technology, we've had computers, we've had equipment that's been brought in, yes. and without proper training, it's fallen by the wayside and it becomes moot. So that's something that we definitely wouldn't want to, to happen with, um, with whatever the Smart Bond project, with uh, all that that would be bringing in and all that that would uh, entail. So right. just put that out there, something that for me as a board member, that that's really critical to ensure that, the, that the, the proper training and 
um, where not just professional development, but uh, training around the tools and equipment and all of that is definitely in place. Yeah, and if I can just in sure. interject Thank real you, quick. Dr. So Watson, when it comes to the professional development throughout the district for all staff, just not our teachers, but with all staff, one of the things that I mentioned um, when I presented a few weeks ago as it relates to our strategic initiatives that we need to make sure that we're providing professional development to all staff members so that we can develop the capacity. So a part of that, of course, is making sure that we have a comprehensive professional development calendar as well as offerings for next year. I've asked the teachers and other staff members through the surveys that we put out, you know, to provide me with indication as to what areas of professional learning they would like to participate in. And then once I get my full complement of the cabinet together, we will begin working on identifying ways in which we can deliver those professional development. I had a conversation just yesterday, actually this morning, with Ms. Martino, indicating that she and I needed to get together and really begin talking about next year's calendar, because it's, it's going to be imperative that we built in days in which professional development can occur district-wide for all staff members. So that is a priority of mine, you know, based upon what teachers and other staff members have shared with me in terms of their, their desire, their wanting, and their need for continuous professional learning. So will you be pre presenting on March 4th uh, during the public hearing? Yes, that is my understanding. Okay. I just have a quick question. I, I had one as well. Oh. You first. Um, does this bond cover the telephone system as well? No. It's not, okay. No. But it initially, is. that was the plan, um, correct? But what did cover the telephone system? Cabling, the cabling for the telephone system was covered by E-rate money, uh, over $500,000 that had not been used and we were able to access that last year and use that. Okay. Has there been an upgrade on our phone system? I don't know that. Still um, not, right? Yes. So the telephone systems originally, when we had originally planned it, we had planned it back in February. Mm -hmm. But the purchase orders and the pieces that needed to go to the vendors didn't really go till August. And for whatever reason, that's when it started. What was supposed to have happened, but circumstances beyond control, is they were supposed to be cut then so that the work could begin and go through the summer when staff weren't in buildings right. and students. Right. So we do have it. The high school's been done, the middle school, ELC, uh, maybe possibly Krieger. I'm going to check on that one. PACE has been done. Um, they are still working. They work after hours. The company that's part of the purchase, they come and they do that. Um, and they're, because during the day they can't be in classrooms. Right. So that's where we're at with that. Okay. Um, and then we'll have a phone system. And a, um, the phone system, when it was planned, was planned to uh, Ms. Long's question, even though it didn't cover it because we hadn't applied for that, um, it will be integrated into the security technology phone system that we purchase will be integrated, you know, the forethinking of that. So I just had um, a couple other quick things sure. that I just wanted to ask. So the professional development that is um, being spoken about, um, and that is coming from the ideas are coming from what teachers and staff feel that they need, correct? Teachers and the surveys, the surveys that we did. And then another thing that um, are we is the smart the, the school smart bond act is that in conjunction also with the capital project because we don't want to be investing in changes if there's different conversations going on in that arena. So thank you. So last year I was invited by Ms. Long to be part of it, and Dr. Rosser has you know I've been on some of the meetings, and Dr. Rosser and I speak as well. So there is alignment with that. We know we don't want to do double efforts. Right. Um, so absolutely and. I've worked previously with this gen with these gentlemen in another district, and we know to make sure everything's aligned. And then so one, thank you. and then one other thing, I think I've made this in um, a conversation that the board that we've had is: is there any way that we could? And you know, obviously, this is up for discussion. Is changing the word security to safety? I just feel like security makes it feel like a prison versus safety. That's our goal, right? And 
Sure. So the term security right now is the way the module is written in the smart bonds plan, but we absolutely can refer to it, you know, for safety moving forward regarding presentations and anything, you know, you and Dr. Ross or the board would like. It's just a comment. I, that's what I would like. But, yeah. Trustee Reeser. Uh, yeah, and, and the question that I had is about the security component uh, of the technolo technology upgrades envisioned under the uh, Smart Schools Bond Act. Um, it's a question that you may, uh, Ms. Rabinowitz and the committee members may not have an answer to right now, so if, if not, that's fine. Maybe it's just a question that I'd like you to contemplate um, as you move forward. And that does have to do with um, the relationship <laughs> with how quickly the security technology is moving. Um, and, and how quickly it's moving past our ability to, to contemplate the ethical and privacy concerns that they prompt, um, prompt us to think about. Um, you know, s security systems now uh, include things like retinal scans and, and face rec recognition software, et cetera, um, which raise issues of privacy, right? Uh, not just for uh, students whose safety is our priority, but whose privacy should be as well, right? But also for visitors, staff, everyone who's in our, in our, in our buildings. So again, it's maybe not a question you can answer right now, but maybe you'd want to like, make, make an appeal for the committee to keep in mind at some point um, is uh, the, the need to reflect upon and keep such other concerns in mind, right? As, as we move forward to do everything we can to protect, uh, improve safety and security uh, and keep our students safe, uh, that we can keep privacy concerns uh, in mind as well. Absolutely. Thank okay. you. <clears throat> Any other questions, board members? Well, thank you very much, Mr. Benowitz, for your presentation. Board members, we will continue to keep you updated on um, things occurring with this project. Um, as Ms. Rabinowitz had presented, we will be preparing for a public hearing for May, or is it March 4th? March 4th. March 4th, I'm, I'm jumping us to May, uh, March 4th. So we will be preparing for a public hearing and we will be sending out notices to our families, our communities, to let them know that we will be presenting much more in detail the plan. So if there's feedback that the community would like to provide, that that will be the opportunity for them to be able to do so, okay? Thank you, Ms. Rabinowitz, for that report. <clears throat> At this time, we're going to move to our Board of Education reports. Um, we're going to start with uh, this. I'm just going to say them in order, and then we can just, uh, just um, report out on them. The Student Advisory Report, the Audit Committee, the Construction and Facilities Committee, the Curriculum Committee. The Health and Wellness Committee, the Parent and Community Engagement Committee, the Policy Committee, the SAVE Committee, the Common Council Liaison, Dutchess County School Board Liaison, and that's it. So let's go in that order. So I'll kick it off with the student advisory report. So Ms. Cassie, she's not here this evening. How is she presented along with the superintendent? Um, and she's in the throes. I know the superintendent has been meeting with her. And... Um, they're, they're really looking to take it to another level when it comes to the voice and input from our students. Um, one of the things that uh, was, was uh, put out there as a recommendation, and of course the board uh, has to agree, is um, that I know that the, the board clerk has been busy, and one of the things that I see is that they want it, because I said, whose seat is that? And she said, that's the board liaisons. I think it's a wonderful idea, but it has to be um, consent of the board. So that's an, another piece, and we can just discuss it right here is um, for the board liaison to serve on the dais, however, whatever the uh, construction of the, uh, the dais is, but that the board liaison, um, I thought, I think it's an exceptional idea. I know Dr. Rosser, I think you uh, also uh, mm -hmm. mentioned it. Um, so board members, is anyone opposed to that? No. Uh, Trustee martinez Leffer. I'm not opposed to it. Trustee Long. I'm good with it. Trustee Reeser. Same for me. Yeah. Trustee Clifford. Okay. Okay. So then we will let um, pr pretty much uh, the, the uh, board liaison presents once a month. So she would be at one of the board meetings, generally speaking. I know the young people are quite busy these days. 
There were other discussions about young people. One of the things is typically our participants, are there any participation in government students in the audience? All right, come on down. Come on down. I didn't realize you two were participation in government students. So one of the things we also talked about specific to the youth voice is to really um, to highlight these pieces. Um, uh, board clerk Torres is uh, setting up some appointments. I wanted to uh, visit the class of the participation in government. You can have a seat down here, up close and personal, because um, the meeting shouldn't be long tonight, but if it gets a little long, then we can get you out of here. So we need to see you front and center. Um, you want to state your names? Imani? And what grade are you in? 11th. Wonderful. And Cheyenne, and what grade are you in? 11th. That's wonderful. So just for both of you to know this, and you can continue to spread this message to the young people throughout uh, the high school, your voice matters. And this board takes seriously uh, what our students are saying. And um, you should know um, Cassidy, correct? The board liaison. And she's going to be to continue to interact and to, to give presentations, um, demonstrating your voice in real time directly to the board, but we also would like to hear from you just across the board. And I know Dr. Rosser, I don't know the details of what you're going to be doing, but I know that that's another level. I know that you've done, I know that you've done some of that already um, like with, um, I don't know, you had a presentation or something at Dutchess Community College when you pulled some of the young people together and I know that you're going to continue to do that. Can we see what's going on with my microphone, please, because this is being recorded? And so um, I would imagine that you're going to continue those processes, and I know that there were other avenues of um, youth involvement and the youth voice that you were, you were seeking. So I can speak a little bit to that. So Deron Wilson, who is the executive director of school engagement, has been really leading efforts to, to pull together and make sure that our student governments at all of our schools, that there's alignment and that we are elevating student voice throughout the district. Of course, we have Cassidy, who will be serving as the board liaison. However, we want to make sure that Cassidy is not only hearing from her peers here at the high school, but that there is a vehicle for us to be able to have information from students at other schools to be able to share information with her. So when she is here sitting next to me, at the board meetings and if there's questions that come up if she does her monthly reports that she's able to speak about the student experience from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. Um, Mr. Wilson has also been assisting me with pulling together what I call the superintendent's student advisory panel. Uh, we met this past fall. Um, we're planning another meeting during the springtime to, to give me the opportunity to gauge you know, how our students' experience is in our high schools as well as our middle schools. Let me back up a little bit. So when we pulled together students, we pulled together students from the middle school and the high school. And there was a wide array of students. Um, I believe there were sixth graders through 12th graders that were among us. And they shared with me a number of different um, ideas, thoughts about how we as a school district can improve our programming for them in order for them to have a wonderful K through 12 experience. So that work will continue. Um, having Cassidy sitting next to me here at the board meeting is a wonderful opportunity for us to display to the community how much we value the student voice. Thank you, sir. So that's pretty much it for the student advisor. The audit committee is the school board uh, at large at this juncture. If you know of any individuals that are interested in finance, interested in um, uh, dealing with anything when it comes to uh, the fiscal component of, of the district, uh, please, uh, do we have anything, board clerk, on the website so that if they wanted to send um, an email or something? I'll add it. I'll add it. You can add it. Okay, because we're looking to revamp the committee. The, versus it being the uh, board as a committee at large in totality. We would like to get rival individuals back on. When I first became a board member in 2015, it was, um, the, the, that committee dissolved and it remained the, uh, the board at large. And it's not, it's, 
that's not an effective and highly functioning way um, for this type of a committee. So uh, if you know of individuals who, who are interested in, in, in the fiscal component of things, please um, have them give uh, our board clerk a call or send an email to, 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 uh, to the board at large or to uh, Dr. Rosser so that we can begin to rebuild that committee. And I do want to acknowledge that Mr. Goley Sanford did send, um, I believe this past week, did send me an email indicating that there is a person that may be of interest of serving on that audit committee. Thank you so very much. Trustee Mullen. Um, Construction and Facilities Committee. Um, we've been meeting for quite some time now. It's been well over a year. Um, we've given our buildings a lot of thought. We know they need drastic measures to be taking place. Um, it's been a pleasure to be involved. Um, looking forward to some developments. Um, we have actually two individuals who have been assets that are going to present tonight. Um, but we'll have Dr. Rosser just piggyback before we actually introduce them. So with that said, um, Dr. Rosser? Yeah, so thank you very much, Board Member Long, for your contribution in being a part of that, this very important committee. So members of the community, as I shared in my presentation, there's a lot of work that we need to do here in the Poughkeepsie City School District, particularly by way of instructional programming, but also, when we think about our instructional programming, we also need to be cognizant and we also need to give thought to what are our, our facilities. And if our facilities are structured in such a way that will get the most out of the teaching and learning that is happening in our schools. So I've had the opportunity for the past six months, I guess now, of working with um, two gentlemen who will be presenting this evening, Mr. Chris Colby from CPL and Mr. Lou Rodriguez from the Palumbo Group, and putting together what we call our, our proposition for how we can take our schools to the next level. We are putting forward two propositions that will address some immediate needs right now, but we're also looking for the, toward the future. And we wanna make sure that as we are working to develop learning environments that are geared for 21st century learning, that we're also mindful of the amount of money that needs to be invested in order to make sure that our school district is one that is comparable to neighboring school districts. So with that being said, Mr. Kobe, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Dr. Rosser. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, board members. I think we were here about two months ago and gave you a brief update in the process of where we we're at. So just a little history of how we got there and here this evening. Uh, if you recall, we did a walk through the entire district with our team of architects and engineers, uh, looked at all of the buildings from roof to drainage, uh, site work, interior finishes, interviewed building principals and other key uh, staff and admin throughout the district just to get an idea of some of the academic needs as well. So it was really pairing uh, the building conditions along with the academic needs, and that came, um, was put into a list, right? And that list was prioritized. Uh, usually priority ones are safety, uh, and that's what SED wants to see done first is safety. Uh, so that got us to the last presentation and then to this presentation, which is further refined. As Dr. Rosser mentioned, we're looking at two propositions. You can think of them as two phases. Um, and we'll get into the mechanics of how those propositions will look here in a second. Uh, predominantly, <coughs> Proposition 1, or Phase 1, is going to be critical infrastructure, uh, safety items, things that are, as we all know, looking at the conditions of the building, need desperate work right now, the kind of the things that are falling down around us that need to be addressed immediately. Um, we've begun to refer to them in the facilities committee as uh, triage type items, um, as Dr. Rosser gets calls almost weekly, um, as does uh, John Willoughby on items that uh, are continuing to need attention. Uh, so those items are part of this Proposition 1, uh, and I'll outline that here in a second. Proposition 2 goes deeper into uh, the priority ones and two, safety, infrastructure, et cetera, but also starts to address academic needs and pathways uh, for education 
throughout the district. Um, so we'll get into all of that here in a second and the mechanism behind how we're going to structure this when it comes time to vote. So again, uh, Proposition 1, security and infrastructure, not sa uh, or safety and infrastructure. Um, and again, this is going to include upgrades uh, throughout the district that are related to safety and infrastructure needs. Um, and we're going to go building by building here. Uh, prior, so we're going to start at Smith ELC, uh, new security entrance. And, and you're going to see a theme here. These, the scope that I'm going to outline is predominantly very similar building by building, uh, depending on size and condition. Uh, across the district. So new uh, entrance vestibules at, at um, ELC, renovation to toilet rooms, both the larger and smaller toilet rooms, uh, roofing, uh, snow guards on the roof, and boiler at this building. Those were all flagged as priority one uh, conditions that needed to be addressed. And priority two, and this is again consistent throughout the district, is digital signage and landscaping uh, at the um, front of the buildings so that, you know, these are ways to communicate with the community about what's going on, meetings, etc. Another part that I forgot to mention um, when we kick this off here is an energy performance contract. Um, they're often referred to as EPCs, and I think I brought this up at the last meeting. We're looking at this as another <coughs> mechanism, and it's separate from the bond. So this is not something that has to be voted on. It's paid for through the savings of the replacement of equipment throughout the district. And the reason we're looking at uh, using this as a separate mechanism is it frees up capital uh, from the bond budget to do more work throughout the buildings. And then this is a separate mechanism that basically self-funds it, its own work in order to address these items that were identified as priority one safety and health needs. Uh, and again, these are very similar throughout the district. So uh, here at uh, ELC, as an example, we're replacing air hand we replace air handling units in the gymnasium. Same thing in the cafeteria. New HVAC control systems, your control systems that uh, tell uh, the mechanical systems what temperature and how much fresh air to bring into classrooms and other spaces is um, original in most cases throughout the district. Um, so this would be a new uh, control system, digital control system that monitors how much energy you're using. Um, upgrade uh, emergency exit lighting fixtures and um, unit ventilators in the classroom. So those are the uh, um, mechanical systems in the classrooms that bring in the fresh air um, and heat to cool those spaces. And then just some quick photos um, of what, what we're looking at um, when we walk through the building. Here's some of the air handling units, um, bathrooms, uh, not necessarily age appropriate, uh, antiquated lighting, um, and some roofing, flooring, etc. This proposition, I think I forgot to mention when we started here, we're looking at $51 million cost uh, for this proposition alone. So the phase one, uh, safety and health items, and infrastructure right now is, is total up to be Uh, if we move on to Clinton, again, new new entrance, toilets, rooms, janitor closet renovations uh, as it relates to plumbing uh, next to those toilet rooms, uh, roofing, roof drains, and boiler, and again, digital signage. A little bit more in terms of the energy performance contract here, uh, just because of the size of the building and the need, um, but again, it's lighting, uh, exhaust fans, air handling units, um, unit ventilators, and again, the controls. Uh, one of the, the low-hanging fruits as part of the energy performance contract that's it's much needed through the district is, is new lighting throughout the district. So much of the lighting they have now, it's not very bright, it's not conducive to great academic learning spaces. Uh, so the energy performance contract addresses that throughout the district. Um, again, some additional photos of uh, some of the items that we're seeing in terms of plumbing, uh, roofing conditions, uh, here I just mentioned the lighting. These are the unit ventilators that I was uh, referring to that bring fresh air when they're operational, bring fresh air into the classroom spaces, uh, heat and cool those spaces. 
uh, Krieger, new entrance, uh, toilet room renovations, uh, ADA compliant fixtures in the PTOT space. Uh, again, some roofing here, exterior doors, interior doors, uh, some older partition replacement. Again, another boiler here, um, exhaust air into some classrooms, and back uh, condensate return, which is related to the boiler. This also would get digital signage and some concrete entryways that have come uh, Again, energy performance contract portion at this building is the same thing, new lighting, or throughout the classrooms and corridors, new emergency uh, lighting, unit ventilators, and exhaust fans and air handlers. Again, here's some of the photos related to that, very similar um, as you look through the district in terms of plumbing and roofing and mechanical equipment. At Morse, again, same, same sort of stuff, some new entrance, roofing, toilet rooms, uh, replace non-rated interior doors. Many of the doors to classrooms uh, are original to the buildings. They predate current fire code, so these doors would be replaced with uh, doors that meet current fire code. And they would be rated. Um, boilers at this uh, location as well. Heating system piping and radiators, and new, new digital signage. Energy performance contract. Very similar here as well, uh, air handling units, lighting fixtures throughout, new control system, unit ventilators, and, and emergency lighting. And again, very similar, uh, unit ventilators are original in many cases, are non-functional, uh, the roofing needs to be uh, fixed, replaced, um, new operational uh, bathroom fixtures, etc. Uh, Warren, again, very similar, so new entrance, renovations to the toilet rooms, roofing, uh, fire rated doors, providing a boiler, uh, new digital signage, and uh, air handling equipment. The <coughs> energy performance contract, again, here is the same, so lighting, air handling equipment, and ventilators, um, and some exhaust fans. And more of the same in terms of the photos. Uh, middle school, same scope but on a larger scale. Um, so in terms of security entrance, it'll be a little bigger. M many more uh, toilet rooms are being uh, renovated here. Um, same thing with roofing, exterior and in interior doors. Uh, hot and cold water uh, piping and distribution needs to be updated in um, the middle school sanitary piping as well, um, and then some repairs to the boiler um, as well as a digital sign. Uh, energy performance contract here, very similar, but because of the size and the scope of the building, there's a little bit more being done in terms of uh, the amount of equipment that we're replacing and the types of equipment, so it's very similar, but this building is bigger and has some different equipment than the elementary school, so more air handler type work, exhaust fans, um, Etc. But we also get into some things uh, in the form of wood shop um, and specialty equipment that you don't see at the elementary level. Um, excuse me. Let me just interject quickly. Board members, are, if you have questions during the presentation, rather than wait until the end, yeah, it's, you know, we can just jump right in and make this a little more interactive sure. and didactic. So. Yeah. So then, before you go on, yeah. sure. Um, I of course have a question about the pool at the middle school. So I see um, replace air handling unit for the pool area and install new exhaust fans, but what about the issue with the water temperature and the way that the pool is connected to the heat of the building? Is that being addressed? Uh, that is not part of this. It's something that we can look at in terms of the energy performance contract. Um, I think it might be uh, more related to mm -hmm. the EPC, and especially in terms of funding. Um, one of the things, so the scope that we're identifying for this EPC right now is stuff that as we went through the building, we pulled out of the uh, capital project and said, this will probably fit into an EPC. Um, earlier this week, we had our energy consultant going through the district, and they're identifying much more specific items such as 
if the heat, heater for the pool would come up as part of that. Um, are you aware of the issue? Um, our mechanical engineers are. I'm, I personally am not. Mm -hmm. okay. So, okay. And Ms. Clifford, um, as I mentioned before, that is a priority. We are putting things that are into this uh, $51 million proposition, things that definitely need to be fixed, and not to say that the pool doesn't definitely need to be fixed, but we wanted to fi first find out whether or not it would be covered under the energy performance contract versus, you know, another area. So we left it out for this time being until we can get more information. Th thanks. It's uh, just to give you a little bit more background in terms of the items that made it to the list. There are more priority one yeah. items. Yes, yeah, so clearly, <laughs> clearly. No, no, I understand that. Yeah, so <laughs> it's, it was a, it's, you know, it's trying to pick, you know, the best case scenario, right? So a lot of stuff is not included right. that we would love to see, but just trying to fit it into the budget. Um, so again, the high school, very similar. In terms of scope, new entryway, replace uh, renovation of toilet rooms, landscaping. Uh, we're starting to get into some parking lots and stormwater repairs here at the high school. Um, exterior doors, overhead doors, roofing, um, and ventilation, and necessary spaces that don't currently have ventilation that require it. Um, and then replacement of old condensate lines. Um, Energy performance contract, again, is very similar right now until we get the more detailed report back, but replacement of lighting, uh, fixtures throughout, unit ventilators, uh, exhaust fans, air handlers, et cetera. And then just some of the photos related to the items that I'm sure we're all familiar with. Uh, PACE, similar scope, uh, security entrance, uh, Toilet room renovations, unit ventilators, uh, replacement of exterior doors, and then the energy performance contract. Again, air handling units, lighting, uh, HVAC controls, and some exhaust fans. Okay. Update HVAC controls to tie into BMS district wide. What's BMS? Uh, building management system. Okay. So that's just a fancy, right now you don't really have one throughout the district per se. Um, it's a, basically it's a computer terminal that allows you to monitor every, every piece of mechanical equipment, what's working, what's not, temperature, et cetera. Um, and one of the items that will come out of the energy performance study that was conducted earlier this week is um, by doing some of this, NYSERDA has grants. Mm -hmm. And if we're replacing controls, for example, uh, throughout the district, NYSERDA may come back and say, all right, if you let us monitor and prove over the next two years after installation that you've, you're on track for this energy savings, they'll kick back a grant. Right. And we're determining what those grants are to help fund some of that. So can I ask, I have one other question, um, and, and it's um, with regard to updating HVAC and air handling units and ventilation and all of that for the classrooms, for for, for people who are not familiar with all of that, um, does that mean um, that, so right now if we drive to any given building, um, it's very common to see um, window air conditioning units in just about every single classroom in almost all of our buildings. Um, and I can attest to the fact that in the summer and in the fall, our second floor classrooms are, you know, 80 plus degrees. Will this address that issue? It will help. So in many of the classrooms, uh, depending on which building you're talking about, and if it's on the south side of the building or whatever, uh, they're getting hammered in those times of years in the sun. Uh, many of the unit ventilators either are not providing full fresh air to the space or uh, none at all. Mm -hmm. So uh, this will help that issue because you're going to increase air flow Okay. This is not an air conditioning system, though. Thank you. Yep. Um, so that's proposition one. So before I go into proposition or phase two, is there any other questions related to um, the work that we're doing in this first phase? 
I, I do have a, a quick question. If we could um, go back <laughs> uh, to a couple schools uh, earlier. Um, I, I want to just commend um, our uh, partners at CPL and the committee for including uh, on, on PHS uh, resurfacing of um, <coughs> parking lots um, mm -hmm. and uh, regrading re and dealing with groundwater issues in the same. I'm glad that made the first cut. Um, as as anyone, every, every one who is at this meeting right now can attest, um, it has a somewhat depressive effect mm -hmm. um, aesthetically. Uh, and so uh, I'm, I'm glad to see it made the cut. But I had a quick question about um, Smith School ELC, um, and it has to do. I have, I have two kind of triage. Um, related pet projects, <laughs> we all have them. Um, the, there's a, a, there has been a leak in the gym uh, for many years. I assume and hope and assume that the restoration and replacement of the roofing would address uh, problems in the entire building, including the gym. That's correct. Okay. And then a question about the new security entrance. The current, we are unable to use the front of that building, as, as, as we all know, because of masonry issues regarding the chimney. Um, the building of a new security entrance without addressing that begs the question why, why we would. Is the masonry issue included or assumed to be fixed by the time a new security entrance would be contemplated, designed, and built? Uh, and what would be the stat where does that fit into that problem that we're aware of fit into this? So that, that problem specifically is being addressed currently. Currently, sorry. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you very much. So Chris, while you go to the slide, I wanna share with the board members and our community that what you will see in the, the following slides is really a, an opportunity for us as a district to really revision all of our schools. Um, you will see some schools named with certain occupational um, opportunities for our children. This, what we're presenting tonight is really more so for a discussion point. Nothing has been solidified in stone as to whether or not a particular school is going to have, let's say, the arts program or a medical program, and even to the terminology being used, medical versus health science, we have not made any sort of definitive determinations as to what these different pathways are going to look like. Of course, being a, a school district that values community input, we would most certainly look to our community in helping us to define what our schools look like. Thank you, Dr. Ross, that's a great point. A few other things I wanna mention about this is, um, so this proposition or phase, as we're gonna call it, uh, still has to go through a few additional hoops. I don't know if you remember, but at the last meeting we talked about if we go above the 51 million that we're gonna be exceeding with that limit. So that's our first challenge. Um, it's not uncommon for that to happen with the city school district, um, but it does, present additional challenges that have to be met. The first would be super majority vote. So well, one second, Mr. Cole. Yep. Can everyone hear him clearly? It's okay? Okay. Uh, so super majority vote would be required for this. So that's a 60% plus positive yes vote uh, the night that this would be put up for referendum. Uh, we also have uh, maximum cost allowances that we have to deal with at each building, so that's basically the state's credit limit at each building based on a formula they have. Um, in order to do this project, we would have to potentially seek special legislation or go longer on our phase. Um, and that's all before um, you internally determine the financial constraints that this may or may not put upon the district and the taxpayers. Um, I understand you have a new business official who's like three days in, so he's probably not wrapped his head around this yet in terms of tax impact and all those other things. So there's flexibility in when this would um, be voted on in terms of phasing. So that may be wrapped in with the $51 million bond as two propositions, or this could come later, um, say three or five years down the road, depending on how the district wants to handle this from a fiscal point of view. And let me just indicate that one of the things that we've done as a part of this committee is we've reached out to the State Education Department to um, have conversations with them about you know, our capital improvement project. We also met today with our financial advisor 
who provided us with a greater detail on our financial condition and with the new um, financial person that we have on board, Mr. Hogan, you know, we're looking at all of our numbers right now to see whether or not this $100 million uh, proposition will be something that can be doable you know, within the, the near future or if it's something that we'll need to project for you know, the, the later future. And the idea with these uh, bond propositions, as you can tell from previous conversations, is you, know, you, you like to avoid doing something this big um, unless it's absolutely necessary. And I think we all know that you know, we need the work. But the idea would also be to get the district on a cadence. So every seven or so years, you're doing a project that's not as large. And it's, just, it's much more even from a financial perspective, disruptive. Uh, less disruptive to academics, et cetera. So there's something else to consider. And let me just clarify one thing as well. So we are, the first proposition is $51 million. What we are suggesting is that we add an additional $49 million above that $51 million. So I don't want people to think that we would have a $51 million proposition and then we would go back out to our public to vote on a separate $100 million proposition. That's right, yeah. So this, 100 million includes all the EPC work as well and everything in proposition. So all, all in uh, 100 million. Uh, so as Dr. Rosser mentioned, we're gonna, we, we looked at the district in terms of uh, academics go, going into this phase uh, with the $100 million uh, proposal. And in doing that, we, we looked at opportunity, pathway opportunities within each building. Um, and, and this isn't anything set in stone, as Dr. Rosser mentioned, this could change. Um, and the term medical could better maybe be termed health sciences. But uh, just thinking ahead, um, and there's, we're not in the programming phases in any of these buildings, so all of this work, even the stuff in Proposition 1, still has to go through user group meetings, admin within the building, teachers, and we still have to get feedback in terms of things that require feedback from a design perspective and an academic perspective. Um, but if you look throughout the district, what, what this would set up is basically a pathway or a school within a school. Um, and for, for argument's sake of this proposition, we've allocated funding in each of these buildings for some sort of pathway. So at Warring, it could be medical, Smith could be uh, literacy, uh, for early learning level, uh, Krieger could be performing arts, uh, Clinton would be technology, Morris could be uh, traditional arts. All of those would flow into the middle school and high school, they would converge, and those pathways would continue on, and the middle school and high school would have um, those, all of those wrapped into the pathway at, the, at those grade levels. If you looked at it from a flow chart perspective, it could be something like this. Uh, where at all the elementary levels they're working on a particular pathway. You come up into the middle school and high school and those pathways continue um, at, at each building. I know this is premature, but how are these pathways chosen? Right now they are just hypothetical pathways. Okay. Some of the ones are based upon what I've received through feedback from the surveys. Um, particularly the arts, you know, there were a lot of individuals who articulated, um, students included, that articulated that they would like some sort of arts programming. Um, medical, of course, you know, was one as well. But at this juncture, as I stated before, these are not set in stone. Uh, we want to make sure that we involve the entire school community in this, so we would be going back out to our teachers, to our parents, to our students, and other community members, particularly partners that, that may want to join us. And I'm just simply hypothetically indicating that if we're doing something around technology, we may have one of the biggest technology giants here in this region, IBM, wanting to partner with us to make this a reality. But as I mentioned, right now, this is really just more so for discussion points just to share with the community our thinking around creating opportunity pathways for our students that are connected to real life opportunities once they graduate from high school or transition into a post-secondary collegiate institution. Yeah, I just wanted to bring, to highlight that Dr. Oster because it's um, when we look at trends and when we look at um, educating the 21st century student, 
Um, it's, it, it, we, of course, it would be done strategic. I think even more than just enrolling the community. Yes, oh. that's important, but you know. Um, if I can add to that, so for instance, you know, and I, I, I mentioned my experience in Buffalo. In Buffalo, when I was in the high school, I worked at a, a high school that was a vocational high school. We did culinary arts there, we did cabinet making there, and we also did, you know, machine shop. In the Buffalo region, cabinet making was not, we were graduating kids with, with skills and a diploma, you know, reflecting their ability to, to make cabinets. But in the Buffalo region, students were walking out without many opportunities. So in 2015, when we implemented um, a, a different high school model, we looked at, we conducted research to look at what sort of opportunities would be available to students in the present as well as for the next 20 years. And then we develop programming in each of our schools to reflect that. So if there was a need, and you know, I'm thinking of you know, health sciences, for instance, and I'm thinking of Vassar Brothers, and I'm also thinking about Mid-Hudson um, Hospital. Um, if there's a need, or will be a need, four years, five years, 10 years, 20 years from now, for a greater number of employees in the medical field that we as a school district should be preparing our students through these pathways to be able to assume some of those career opportunities. So that was our thinking around it. Um, once we solidify more information around what people would like to do, connected to partners that may be out there, such as Vassar Brothers, such as IBM, such as you know, a number of different community assets that are here regionally, that we will then explore what will be the likelihood of great opportunities for our children in those areas. And if we find a, a pathway that would be very beneficial for us to prepare hundreds and hundreds of students for employment in those areas, we most certainly will go with that pathway. How is that different then from career and tech that BOCES provides that we don't, in my opinion, take full advantage of right now? It may be, it may be integrated in it. It's too soon to say right now, but it may be integrated in it. <clears throat> if we can provide the programming and we can connect with a partner and be able to do it at a, a lesser cost, than sending our children to BOCES, then I want to be able to do that as a school district. Well, Dr. Oster, this is differently than just the BOCES because this is infiltrated throughout the entire school district, correct? It would be, yeah. yeah. So the so BOCES program right now is only I provided no, to I, high school I students. No, I understand. I'm yeah. aware of that. Yeah, and I look at this and I think magnet schools. I don't know yeah. how, pri how privy, you know, well, it just yeah. reminds me of uh, the magnet school mentality of, um, you know, specifically. And that's neither here nor there. We can go on. I just, I just wanted to, it was more my, my, in this was more to go on record so that it's not misconstrued. Sure. Well, and can I just make one and, you know, piggy, uh, piggybacking off of um, Dr. Watson is, you know, I guess the one thing that I am, I don't know if it's concerned about, I mean, I do like the idea of us having specific strengths and looking at um, where students can have um, focus for either college or for a career um, when they graduate college. I mean, when, after they graduate high school. But my concern would be the, um, since right now we don't have a curriculum, our elementary schools, we know they're not um, necessarily teaching the same thing um, because we don't have a curriculum to uh, make sure teachers are, are on the same page. Mm -hmm. And I don't think teachers are provided enough time to, in order to discuss what they are teaching and how they are teaching their curriculum. Um, this could also, you know, in conjunction with that be an issue where, you know, one school may be teaching in one way and another in another way, and then, you know, how do parents choose? Are they given a choice? Are they not given a choice? Are they, if they live in the Krieger area, are they just gonna be then focusing on performing arts? Mm -hmm. So those are just some concerns that I have. Yeah. And some of those things have been, been um, discussed. You know, one of the things, particularly as we were discussing, if we're making, and this is all hypothetical, I just wanna continue to reiterate that, that if we're making the Krieger School a performing arts school, that there may be parents in the Warring neighborhood that, that may want their children to participate in performing arts. 
And we as a school district would then figure out a way to make sure that students within those particular neighborhoods would also have the opportunity. As it relates to the overall curriculum, let's all keep in mind that this is something that we're proposing for the future. We understand that there are some things that we need to get in order today, tomorrow, in the very near future. This will be something that, as Mr. Kobe indicated, would be something that would be really in the future. So once we went through and got done with our $51 million project that we can then, as phase two, begin implementing these things, and that may be five, six years down the road. So then is the, and I don't want to take from your presentation, so I, I guess my question right now is there, there's a lot of this kind of conversation that I believe needs to happen, and I have a number of concerns and a number of questions, but I don't want to delay your presentation. So um, with that in mind, I just want to make sure that there will be an opportunity for us to actually really have a conversation about this. And because we're talking down the road, because, you know, let's be realistic, SED approvals take a long time. You know, we may, this will, you know, we'll, we'll ask the voters to vote on this in May, but that doesn't mean it's going to start in, Ju in June or July. Like, these projects take a very, very long time. So I understand that Proposition 2 is something that is quite down the road. Mm -hmm. So then, given that, you know, what we're talking about today, it could be a completely different iteration of that five years from now. Well, certainly. So, well, that, certainly. so that what you're, you know, what you're proposing is, is, is a living, breathing, basically, to, in the way for me to put it, a living, breathing proposition. It's going to, it's going to change, it's going to morph, it's going to not look five, six, eight years down the road the way that it looks right now wh while we're talking about it. Um, but I do want to make sure that we have an opportunity to talk about the, as Ms. Rabinowitz said earlier, you know, like the 10,000 mm -hmm. foot view. Yeah, we, we only put these in here just for conversational pieces, just to give people an understanding of how we can revision our schools. As I mentioned, the process for identifying what each of the schools will look like is going to be one that is participatory, mm -hmm. where we're making sure that not only board members are, are a part of the conversation, but we're getting information from students, getting information from parents, we're getting information from other community members, taxpayers. We're also getting information from potential partners. You know, I mentioned IBM, and I, I keep saying IBM, and I don't want people to think that we already have a partnership with IBM to do this, because we do not, but just sharing that there's so many more conversations that need to take place in order for us to solidify this. And not only that, but we also then need to conduct the research to make sure that 15, 20 years down the line that these opportunities are available for our right. children, because that's going to be most important. Proposition 2 was voted on this May, the majority of the work in Proposition 2 we wouldn't even put a shovel on the ground until five years from now. Right. So that's, that's a great point. Um, I'll go through this just so you have an idea of um, the magnitude of the, you know, what we're touching at all of the buildings. I think it's important to, at, at least at this point, even if things are going to change and they probably will change, that there's uh, a thought about it and the money is at least allocated for doing something in this space. Mm -hmm. um, so at Smith, we have the creation of uh, early learning literacy center, renovate the cafeteria, sidewalk and driveway replacement, building facade improvements, replace all the windows, replace all the vinyl tile, uh, restore the wood floors in the classrooms, uh, more fire rated doors, brand new acoustical ceiling tiles throughout the building, new handrails, guardrails to meet ADA standards, install an ADA list, this building does not have the... So th that's a question to me right there. Why isn't this on Prop 1? I, to me, if we're not meeting ADA standards, then we're out of compliance. And how can we... You know, for instance, we're out of compliance at the pool. There, there's no way with someone with a disability to get into or out of our swimming pool or to, to get 
down to the locker room and back up to the pool. So how can how is that not a priority? Replacing interior handrails and guardrails to meet ADA standards, or to replace non-rated doors that that was just mentioned 15 minutes ago don't meet code. So how can we have buildings that aren't meeting code and aren't in compliance, and not have those things in Prop One? So some of those things. can we keep the building watertight and can we keep the heat on? So we universally across the district just from a constructability and um, construction efficiency standpoint, we're trying to keep the scopes the same. Um, it's a valid point. It doesn't mean that the scope can't change, but um, it's just, again, it came down to if, if we wanted to address all the things, especially to the level of detail that we're talking about right here, we would need to do 100 million I just want to point out, though, <laughs> that if you were the parent of a child who uses a wheelchair, that would be a priority for you. Sure, absolutely. It, and, I'm, and I'm not saying it to you, I'm saying it to everyone. You know, we do have students who use wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. well, tell that, I just. I just well, this is why the, the $100 million bond proposition becomes more attractive. Not to say that we're placing things into the $100 million bond that we only feel to be extremely important, because I wish we could do this all. And I do yeah. understand, I, I, and I really am kind of, I, I, to, a, to a certain degree, playing devil's advocate, but also, you know, we have to consider everyone's perspective right. when we talk about projects like this. and. Uh, while I do, I am not, I, I understand, I'm not naive. I understand, it, you know, just like with anything, you have to pick your battles. And we have to triage. I mean, we all know what triage is. We've, you know, we've had to do that for quite some time. Um, but they're just things that need to, you know, let's not forget to shine the light on that. Yeah. No, they're, they're very good, important points to raise, and I think that, you know, as we dive deeper into this, if there's some cost savings that we can realize in the Proposition 1, particularly around the energy savings and some of the other work that the team will engage in, that we most certainly will continue to put additional Priority 1 scope of work into the first proposition. So in addition to that, there's some Just some ideas and images here to show, you know, what the literacy center can look like, the renovations to the corridors, just to give you an idea of uh, the aesthetic that we're looking at um, in the building. Uh, again, cafeteria, classroom renovations, uh, you know, newer spaces, much more conducive to a, a modern classroom at that age uh, level. Uh, Clinton, so we have technology programming here, again, that could change. Um, placement of uh, fuel storage tank, acoustical ceiling tiles, exterior handrails, exterior doors, some retaining walls, vinyl flooring replacement, uh, some damaged interior wall replacement, wood floors and classrooms, uh, more non-rated doors, uh, handrails, um, elevator system, air conditioning and ventilation. And then, again, just some ideas of what classrooms would look like. So under this proposition, we're starting to get into uh, more academic spaces in terms of uh, taking those classrooms and making them modern. Uh, Krieger, here we'd have performance <coughs> uh, programming. Uh, again, that could change. Uh, restoration of the gymnasium floor, classroom re renovation, wood floors, uh, interior handrails, and other rails. Um, and just, if this was the performing arts program, there'd be some focus on revamping that space and doing some things in there that would make that program uh, special and appropriate to uh, the curriculum. <coughs> Owners, art programming, so this would, in addition 
to, and again, this is everything in addition to what's in Prop 1, replace all the windows, acoustical ceiling tiles throughout the building, um, and just renovations of these two spaces adjacent to the cafetorium that would be specific to the art program. Uh, Warren, this would have a medical programming space allocated for it. Um, this school uh, would get a very large renovation um, pretty much in its entirety. Underground fuel storage tank replacement, air conditioning improvements, uh, vestibule at the gym entrance, uh, playground, site drainage issues, building facade improvements, windows, etc. <coughs> um, again, just some images that you know we're looking at new, new aesthetic in the corridor, something that's more inviting uh, when you're walking through the building, and then space that's dedicated to the new pathway program. Uh, middle school, again, pathways here converge, so there's going to be dollars alloc allocated to the renovation of spaces for the continuation of those pathway programs, renovation to the cafeteria, auditorium seating, parking lot, uh, air exterior steps and handrails, replacement of vinyl tile in the classrooms, auditorium floor, tile in the kitchen, stage flooring, and acoustical seating. Um, and again, here uh, we're looking at doing a, a complete redo of the cafeteria, and then this wing right now would, could be potentially the pathways location uh, that would be renovated for the continuation as uh, elementary students come into this building. And then a high school, again, continued pathways programming, auditorium, lobby, collaborative space, um, just outside of here would be renovated. Um, more parking lot replacement, <coughs> library flooring, uh, tile throughout older portions of the building, uh, re restoration of the auditorium stage and ceiling tile throughout the building. Um, and again, this is collaborative space that we're looking at just outside of the auditorium. And then this wing and adjacent to us here would be continued pathways, uh, renovation programming to support those programs. Um, I have a quick question. Wasn't there discussion of building a bigger pool, or is that just totally out, out like, <coughs> off the table because it's too expensive? Yeah, I, I, don't, I know very early on the pool conversation came up, um, and I think just given the magnitude of all the work that we're trying to tackle on the cost of a, of a pool, um, and also eatability with that becomes difficult <coughs> in the state. A question about <clears throat> Proposition 2 for Warring Elementary. Um, where do the Warring Elementary School students go while their school is being gutted and renovated in its entirety? Because that doesn't sound like summer work over a period of few summers. That's uh, stem to stern. Not going to happen in the summer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, right now the conversation we've had internally is to look at using um, PACE for swing space as we do that type of Um, and then real quick to schedule, um, so at the next month's meeting, we're, we've already started the seeker process, so that's the State Quality Environmental Review Act. Um, that process for both propositions right now is very simple and basic because all of the work that we're doing is type 2 work. What type 2 work is the state has already determined that that has no environmental impact. Um, so what we'd be looking to do is next month come back, present financials in terms of taxpayer impact, uh, have you declare an agency for the seeker process, um, and then moving forward, we're still looking at a May 19th vote. Um, the design process on the bottom here, depending on how the board decides to move forward with Proposition 2, um, is obviously going to take a while. So as you already mentioned, uh, this design process is going to last until 20. SED review time is continuous through that, depending on how the project's phased. But anything that happens in design um, proposition two, if the board were to decide to put that together um, this May, as opposed to pushing it out, um, still has to be phased over a, a long period of time. So we're talking a project that's going to last to probably close to 2030. So, I, is there any question related to 
schedule or the scope or anything else? It's massive. Uh -huh. yes. It's expansive. But our children deserve it. That's you know we we had the we had to make a decision as to whether or not we were just going to sort of shoot for the fifty one million dollar proposition, and then in our conversations, understanding that you know we're behind as it relates to uh, making sure that all of our facilities are you know meeting the twenty first century child, that we felt it be important to make sure that our community has an understanding of our vision for what the future could mean for our children and to put it out there to, to begin receiving feedback from our community. When I say massive, I mean, I think it needs to be done in a shorter period of time because our students do yeah. deserve it. Mm -hmm. I think that's too expansive. Um, maybe I would be dead in my grave, but um, I just, I think that if we can build pyramids and you know, without heavy duty equipment. I know some of this is driven from the Benjamins, I get it. But to me, this timeline to me is unacceptable. I say give it five years, done. Some of the challenges that we run up against is the New York State um, aid ability with this, as well as our own district internal finances. And that's why we, we go after dollars, so we don't wait for the state for everything. We say, we begin to look at this in a very structured, strategic way and say, <clears throat> let's find the dollars. Let's position ourselves strategically. Let's not just wait for the crumbs. And we give our babies what they need because it's been a long time coming. And if you wait for folks to get it, this is where our philanthropic community comes in. This is where um, you know the push comes in. And, and I believe, you know, just put it out there. I, I think it's a it's it's a it's it's a great plan. I, I saw some of the other mock-ups, so I don't know when you presented it when we were over at Central. And um, this is foundational. Why should why should our kids get the crumbs? You know, this isn't to you, Dr. Ross. I'm not. This isn't a statement. I'm just speaking from my heart. I became a little revitalized. I was quite tired when I came here, just getting off the road. But you know, seeing this, it's, I'm like, let's let's do this. And Dr. Ross knows I've been saying I'm trying to position myself so I can be one to drop five million on the district and it be nothing. About 100 million. Uh, honey, I, that's me saying nothing but a word because I'm trying to position myself right now. But um, yeah, so so I think it's a beautiful thing. I just I just did this timeline, you know. But it, you know, but I think it's a beautiful thing. We appreciate the efforts and the fine work Trustee Long has been putting in for a while, driving this from the onset. And I'm now Dr. Ross uh, picking up the mantle and, and really beginning to forge ahead, uh, you know, as a leader in this. Uh, but, but I say we shake some bushes and begin to really, and I don't mean today shake bushes, I mean we do. I'm a realist, I'm a realist also. But, but we do begin to put it out there to folks because, you know, leaping the net will appear. You never know, someone may have $100 million. I mean, um, Mark Zuckerberg gave his school a boatload of money, you know, just, so I'm not, I'm not sleeping on them. You just, shake some bushes and really put it out there, continue to put out there what, what we would like for these the, our students, for our babies, and, um, and uh, you know, speak that thing into existence. Mm -hmm. That's just, this is Felicia Watson speaking. <clears throat> Any additional questions, comments? I just have a comment, and I just want to say, um, I, I personally want to thank you for all the work that both of you have done. I know. Well, you haven't got up. I, it hasn't been easy. Um, and I just remember our very first meeting, and we were all over the place. Everybody had all these ideas. Um, because I'm transparent, I think we had three pages of all kinds of ideas. And then as we began to work together, we became realistic. You know, we started talking about the dollars. And, but I, I just want everyone to know it, it's always, this whole committee has always been about what our children deserve. Um, and that's how we always start our meeting. So, and Lou, I just want to special give you a special shout out because every meeting we start, he always reminds us, we're not here for us, we're here for these little kids. Mm -hmm. Or they're not little kids, I'll take that back. For the students, so. So I just want to thank you. Thank you. Thank Board you. Members, are there any further questions? And this is going to be ongoing, you know, as far as information sharing, because it is 
critical that the board is privy to uh, what is going on. I'm doing uh, committee report outs, that's one thing, and then, and then uh, of course, Dr. Rosser is as he sees fit the information in between when the uh, when the uh, uh, when Mr. Rodriguez and Mr. Colby when they come to present before us. But if there's any questions in between that, um, of course things can be answered. We don't have to wait until uh, they they come to do a presentation in order to ask questions or to to give input. There being none, we're going to move to the next. Uh, Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. We're going to move to the next. Um, Committee report, curriculum committee. So the curriculum committee had their first meeting this year yesterday um, after school. I was unable to attend. I still haven't received the, meet, uh, the meeting minutes. Um, so I will hold off on any comments until next meeting and then I can um, bring forward anything that was talked about in the meeting yesterday. Um, the health and wellness um, committee has not, um, our January meeting was canceled. So there hasn't really been a meeting since October. There wasn't one in November and December because of the holidays. Um, the Health and Wellness uh, Committee, just for those who may be, might be interested in attending, uh, meets on the second Thursday of the month from 3.15 to 4.30, typically in the middle school library. Um, the one thing I can uh, um, say State is that um, the committee has has worked, and Leah Harris quite often comes to the microphone and um, in her own way gives a report from the well wellness committee meetings. Um, it's been very um, pivotal in securing and pushing forward getting the water bottle filling stations um, uh, in in schools and money committed to by um, Assemblyman Jacobson. So actually that's the one thing I, question I have as a status update on where we are with um, his allocation uh, and the filling stations. I know Mr. Willoughby has been out on medical for a while now, so I'm, I'm not sure that it's a question that you can answer, Dr. Rosser, but. I can't, I can't provide details right now. In fact, Mr. Willoughby and I are planning to have a, a meeting, a phone conference tomorrow to discuss more about it. We have received the funding from Assemblyman Jacobson's office, so I want to thank you know, Assemblyman Jacobson and his staff for making that a reality mm -hmm. for the Poughkeepsie City School District. Had a conversation with him this past Friday, and um, he asked some of the same questions, and I shared with them that we will be providing a timeline for when we will be installing those new water fountains. Okay, and and I know that you attend, um, and Coach Hodge attends the um, the Health and Wellness Committee meetings. Also, just to to make the board aware and and our community members aware, uh, you know, we, they don't just the the committee doesn't just about the water fountains. Um, it it has been. Uh, it's been, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Very strategic in making sure that uh, when changes are made with regard to federal regulations, with regard to school um, food, whether it's snacks, uh, our lunch program, our breakfast program that we're meeting uh, standards, also, uh, the committee is, com is not only committed to the health and well-being of our students, but of the whole district. So that's faculty and staff. Um, we have uh, a member of each school building on the committee uh, representing their building and then bringing back information to their respective uh, schools and sharing it with both um, faculty, staff, and parents. We try to do a newsletter that goes home um, to parents just to support them in making healthy eating choices um, and you know keeping fit and, and that kind of thing. Um, so I just wanted to let give you guys a, a little bit of a sense. They, they put a, together a team that does a heart walk. Um, the middle school spearheads that. The kids over there collect money and um, they do it as a team. So those are some of the things that the committee's involved in. Um, the Parent and Community Engagement Committee, actually, Gully does a fantastic job of keeping us up far better updated than I could um, 
because quite often that committee meets uh, during the day, during the school day, um, and I'm unable to attend because I'm working myself. Um, they've been very clearly, as Gully has said, and Dr. Rosser has made us aware, they've been very instrumental in the, um, the district lights program, which you know, has gone from Thursday night lights to Friday night lights, now it's Saturday morning lights. Um, they're looking for volunteers, so anyone out there who's interested in volunteering your time, um, they need volunteers. They're hoping uh, to get at least 125 participants. Um, by doing it on Saturday mornings, we're hoping to get parents involved um, and offering uh, workshops for parents um, to participate in, uh, to support them um, in, you know, parenting their children. I, I shouldn't say parents, I should say parents or guardians or those adults that are responsible for the students that are in our district. Um, we, uh, the committee also um, has discussed in the past, and I see it here in our, the minutes for the last meeting, um, having ambassadors to each school um, as part of the committee so that when, when the committee is working on things, we have a direct uh, line to each of our schools. Um, that I, I want to let everyone know that the, um, and I believe maybe Gully you mentioned this at the last meeting, but there's a directory that's been created of all of the services that, um, that provide um, service to our students. And there's a directory uh, that can be it's up and running. There's 50 organizations listed. It can be found at www.pokyc.org. Um, Gully mentioned about the Poughkeepsie uh, Schools Foundation. And also, um, on a committee note and on a board note, um, the 2020 census is, is gearing up. Um, and I wanted to... Uh, I just wanted to put it out there that it's incredibly important, um, particularly for our students, um, to make sure that everyone in our community gets counted. Um, a lot of public education, public school funding is driven from the census and census data. Um, so uh, I hope that we all together, and, and this is a push from the, um, the Parent and Community Engagement Committee as well, is to reach out as far and as wide as we can and, and cast the net as far as we can to make sure that everyone gets counted. That's all for me. So the policy committee, um, there, we talked about this at the board in general and um, put out two options of uh, what we need to do or want to do specific to updating our district policy. Um, those discussions um, will, are driven by dollars and, um, and so we do need to see what we will be doing uh, specific to that. Safe committee, uh, I don't know, trustee Long, yeah, um, We haven't had a meeting. We have one scheduled uh, February 20th. So I don't have any updates at this time. Uh, the Common Council liaison. Uh, so there's been a lot going on actually with the Common Council. We have the, the children's cabinet that's being driven by the mayor, not necessarily directly by the Common Council, but in uh, co chairs, Dr. Rosser and Mayor Rollison are co chairs with that. But I, the Common Council members have been active in, um, in, um, in, in their interests of this, this children's cabinet. Um, and um, the board sent common council members a letter uh, to congratulate them on their, those who were recently um, received their um, swearing in ceremony. So we sent letters to, to each of them as well as to the county legislators um, within, our, within our districts. And um, <clears throat> so those are just, as well as to the county executive, uh, just ways that we continue to seek to collaborate and to, to build relationships. So the, uh, tomorrow there's a meeting for the Dutchess County uh, School Boards Association. I anticipate attending that meeting. 
Um, I thought we got an email saying that tomorrow's meeting was canceled. I think, I'm sorry to interrupt. I think the, uh, Kelly Lappin said it might be canceled if BOCES is canceled, right? So yeah, I think she was giving a warning. Yeah. So I haven't received that. When I read it this morning, yeah. I sent our, uh, Kelly a, an email. It, the, the meeting was on, so, but I haven't been on email. Uh, no, this came I think it's, it came yesterday. I think it's about the inclement weather. Inclement, okay. Correct, correct. Yeah. correct. Yeah. And, and Dr. Watson, I can give a very, very short um, summary of the last meeting, which I did attend. I was, I was uh, able to attend. It was really, really quick. Uh, there was a meeting of the uh, Dutchess County School Board Association on Thursday, January 2nd. Uh, they meet at um, the BOCES boardroom. I was uh, able to attend on behalf of our, our board. Uh, the, the meeting was mostly taken up by a somewhat lengthy uh, presentation uh, by uh, Stuart Waxman, uh, who's an, an attorney uh, who specializes in, it seems to be a significant portion of his practice on representing school districts in collective bargaining. Um, and um, it was illuminating for me. I think much of what he discussed was probably already well known to, to veteran school board members, but for me it was definitely a learning experience um, and was a good primer for me uh, in, in learning more about CB, CBAs and, and, and the process. Um, and um, the only other thing I was going to say was what you mentioned, Dr. Watson, which was the meeting tomorrow night, which I cannot attend. Um, so I would have to rely, on, if it does, is going to be held, I'd have to, uh, we'd have to rely on someone else besides me uh, to, to attend. And I guess we'll have to check on the weather as well. Thank you, sir. That's it, I believe, uh, for the committee reports. Is, are there any other comments specific to the committee report? No. Uh, any other comments from the board? So I did, um, we, during our board retreat, we talked about the committee titles, classifications, and all of that. And I did do some research. I think probably the easiest thing, so I have it here, but I think probably the easiest thing is for me to, um, even though it's more work, um, is to either just forward links and let you all take a look at it or to create a summary and then break down what, what, what um, others have offered and so that we can make a definitive decision what exactly what we want to do. I think one of the things is just as simple as putting them on the agenda and then the board reporting out. I think that that's worth its weight in gold. Um, I'm looking at you, uh, board for, um, um, Torres, only because um, you brought it up. And, and thank you for, for um, you know, focusing on that and putting them on, on the agenda. So uh, thank you. So Felicia, I think you should, um, just my opinion, I think you should provide the links. I don't think you should have to go ahead and summarize all of the information. We all have a lot on our plate, but I think we can all take it upon ourselves to follow links and do the rest of the research for ourselves. I don't think that should fall on you. Just my opinion. Are there any other comments of how you would like the information presented to you? Thank you, Trustee Long, Trustee Clifford. Is that sufficient? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then here's the, the bottom line then, is once that's done, then we're going to need some turnaround as far as how we feel it should be executed because this has been a long time since that I know that uh, Board Clerk uh, Torres has, has been really focused on the cities and trying to push and get this thing sealed. And so we need to just, uh, just do it. I can say that one of the, uh, one of the uh, school districts that I, I saw, I thought they had an exceptional one, and they had charters and information for every committee. Question. And salute. And, and uh, real definitive information. And I think minimally, if we position ourselves to emulate that, that, that would be, that would take us a long way as far, as well as putting on the, the, uh, the website the specific days of the meetings and then who chairs it and which board members sit on both that specific committee. But I'll just send the links over then. Um, uh, there's only one that I thought was exceptional, so. Well, and, and I think it's important for us to, um, we have to provide, and this is something that's been missing, is we have to provide each of those committees with a charge, with, and, and as I said, it, it, with the exception of the health and wellness, because that we that committee really was focused on policy when the new FDA regulations, um, the federal reg regulations came out. But 
if we're not giving them a charge, if we're not giving them, um, you know, a vision of what we expect and and things that we expect or what we're looking for from them, that we have no idea of knowing whether they're fulfilling, and they have no idea. Well, well the, the charge there, the, the charge has been there. These are not new committees. More importantly, some but doctors. but a lot of those committee members and committee people aren't clear what their job job is because it's morphed so many times. Again, I just want to reiterate a couple things. Is One is that it is there and it's up to the committee to frame it themselves, but more importantly, it's important, as Dr. Rosser has said, to find out what is needed within our district mm -hmm. and then create, and, then it's, it. and it could be the ones that are already in place and then we, we, we collapse them into um, other ca uh, header categories. But again, I want to just say that there's no there's no excuse, and that's not my saying that that's what you're saying. No, it's the not. committees create the, the board puts in place the committees. It is up to the committee to create it. Those that are active and running, except those that are mandated, like the audit committee, that's slightly different. It's the committee that will put in place, like the presentation that Ms. Rabinowitz put together. The, um, um, regarding the uh, technology committee, they come together, they frame it, the academic enrichment, there's some of these things and I think we have to be careful because we can perseverate over things over and over and over and then nothing gets done. We need to execute and that's what becomes pivotal. If we have to build our wings as we're flying, so be it. However, if we perseverate and major on the minor, then we will never get anything done. I'm not saying that in, in contrast to what you're saying, Trustee Clifford. I'm just making that as a statement because we've been dancing with this for a while, and here's the reality. is committees have been a part of the district for years and years and years and years. This is not something that's new. It's not a new, new phenomenon, and it's not an initiative. These no, but what, that have been in place. but what should be new is the fact that our committees are effective. That should be new. I'm sorry? I said what should be new is the fact that our committees are effective. Just because they've been in place doesn't mean they've been effective. Well, and that's why Dr. Rosser, um, this has to be done in conjunction with what the needs of the mm -hmm. district are. So I right. agree with you 100%. Right. Um, because there's some things that may not even be necessary, that there are other things that we may need and we haven't even begun to look at or approach. Mm -hmm. So um, I know that at the board retreat we talked about this a bit. I think we need to delve a little bit. So that which isn't broken, let's continue to do it. And then other areas we may need to do it. And that falls in sync with, uh, with you, Dr. Rosser. So if, if the board would allow me to sort of distill the information, I have no problem with distilling it for the board and making sure that it's aligned to some of the things that we're doing as it relates to our strategic plan. Um, you know, one of the things that I had mentioned during our board retreat that was kind of not present in our committee structure was that if we're about student achievement, then the only thing that we have right now that's reflecting student achievement is our, 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 our curriculum committee. And our curriculum committee doesn't encompass everything that needs to be discussed and talked about when we talk about the academic achievement right. of our children. So what I would like to do with the permission of the board is to take this information, you know, work with the team, distill it, and then before the next board meeting, be able to provide it to the board members so that we can then have some additional conversations mm -hmm. based upon what we discussed last week at our board retreat. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Is I'm anyone opposed to no. that? No. Trustee martinez Leffert. Not at all. Trustee Long? No. Trustee Reeser? Yep. Uh, no, no problem. No. Trustee Clifford? No. Okay, great. Excellent. So that's how we'll move forward then. We're going to move now to our consent agenda. Are there any items to be removed from the consent agenda? Oh, wait, hold on. 9.6. Are there any other items besides 9.6 to be removed from our consent agenda? Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda excluded agenda item 9.6? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries.
Is there a motion to approve the agenda item 9.6? So moved. Second. Discussion, Trustee Clifford? Wait a minute. Shoot. Well, I pulled it because I had emailed a, a question regarding it and didn't um, get a response, but I'm now realizing that the question I asked um, doesn't pertain to this particular. <laughs> So, so to explain, 9.6 is, re is regarding non-instructional extra service coaching positions for winter sports. 9.5 is instructional coaching positions for spring sports. Um, what my question was, was where are Coach Bueller and Coach uh, Creedon for crew, but they're spring coaches, not winter coaches. Right. Um, so I didn't really need to pull 9.6, but since I did, that was that was the the that's where my thinking was going. So um, I guess at this point, it's just a matter of will there be when will there be non-instructional coaching positions on the agenda for our spring sports? That will be coming next board meeting. It was brought to my attention uh, the recommendation. I had questions. And before I can bring anything to the board, mm -hmm. I need to have those questions satisfied. And that, the questions have not been satisfied as of yet. However, as I um, am fully aware, we want to make sure that our crew coaches, you know, are, are fully aware of their responsibility once the board has provided um, the approval for them to move forward. Um, I'm planning to bring their names forward after the questions, of course, have been answered at the next board meeting. And um, all of our coaching staff is covered for, so spring sports have started, um, or some of them have. Um, practice has started for some of them. Um, I know there's overlap with winter, but I just want to make sure that we're not having coaches coach who haven't been approved yet. If they have started, they have not started with the approval of the board. Gotcha. Okay. You know, what this board resolution speaks to is that effective March 9th, 2020. Mm -hmm. So that's when the season will officially start. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Sorry for the confusion. No problem. Are there further questions? Is there a motion to approve agenda item 9.6? So moved. So, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. <clears throat> Is there a motion to approve the agenda item 14.1? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Is there a motion to approve the agenda item 14.2? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. So just for clarity for our community, instead of doing individual roll call vote, uh, we're doing this to expedite uh, this, and I just noticed that our, our participation in government students are not even here. <clears throat> we're going to move to um, Dr. Ross, are there any walk-on items? Not for this meeting, no. We're going to move to our superintendent comments, followed by uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Andrew Reeser, uh, Ms. Doreen Clifford, Mrs. Uh, Michelle martinez Leffert, Mrs. Deborah Long, Ms. Deborah Long, and then myself. So, um, one, one second, I'm sorry, Dr. Ross. Before we do that, um, I wanted to give the floor, if, um, I don't know if uh, Board Clerk Torres uh, has anything she would like to say regarding things, because I know that you have a lot going on and there's you know, you're trying to do changes and things, and I don't know if there's anything you just want to just share or say. Not at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in the order, please. 
so real quick, and I'm going to be very brief with my, my comments. Um, there's a lot that's been going on in the district, you know, very positive things happening throughout the district. Um, I had an opportunity yesterday to meet with our incoming principal. We met actually all day, um, first part of the morning. Uh, we met in my office. We talked strategy. We talked onboarding. Um, we discussed making um, herself available so that the community can meet with her. And we're targeting right now March 11th in this very room for us to have an evening um, opportunity for parents, students, staff, the community to, to come and meet the new principal. On her first day of February 18th, we will be having a breakfast uh, for the staff. Um, I will be there. I believe it's going to be 7 o'clock in the morning where staff members can come and meet with her. Um, later in the day, there are, are um, department chair meetings, I believe, Ms. Jean Greco. Um, and um, she will be attending those to further have conversations with staff members. Um, in the afternoon yesterday, we came over and we spent a number of hours here, you know, just walking the building, uh, meeting new or meeting staff members, having conversations with students, um, her reacclimating herself to this environment uh, because she was once a student here. And in the evening time, she had an opportunity to meet with um, cabinet members as well as other central office staff members. I can relay from her that she's extremely excited about um, her new beginnings here at the Poughkeepsie High School and in the Poughkeepsie City School District. And she's looking forward to becoming a member of the family on February 18th. Thank you, Senator. Um, the uh, January 2020 um, edition of the Pioneer Post is awesome. Um, congratulations to Hannah Reitzman, who's the president of the club that produced the, the Pioneer Post, uh, to her staff writers, to Robin Ward, the faculty advisor. It's really a great newspaper. It's, it's got breaking news um, and you know, hot button items to discuss uh, from the first page on, club reports, their Spanish language translations of many of the articles. Um, it's easily the equal in terms of writing quality and layout, aesthetics, uh, uh, appeal, and attractiveness. It's easy to the equal of, of my college, Dutch, Dutch Community College's uh, student newspaper, which is the Falcon Press, which is to say both of them are, are good uh, newspapers, but it's, it's just, um, it's college level work in that sense of really, really impressive. So congratulations to Pioneer Post uh, uh, writers and club. Um, the New York State Department of Environmental Cons Conservation is offering school districts um, free, tree sap uh, free tree saplings uh, for, we're thinking about aesthetics, landscaping, and, and opportunities to teach our kids conservation and basic planting skills. Uh, they're giving away for free. Um, and that's something to consider if any building staff or teachers are uh, hearing this and interested, I'll help you in any way I can. I think the deadline's coming at the end of March to apply. So it's an opportunity for um, programming in that area. Um, I witnessed a real fire alarm at Krieger yesterday when I was about to pick up um, uh, Sophie from uh, Krieger. Um, I'm not sure what produced it, e either by an accident or perhaps it was pulled. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, but it, it, was, it wasn't a drill, really. It was an actual fire alarm. I just want to commend um, everyone at Krieger uh, because I, I, I wasn't aware that I was going to witness uh, you know, a, fire, a fire alarm, uh, but I was so impressed uh, with the coolness under pressure uh, of all the staff, including not just uh, Principal Noto and, and a career staff, but also the um, after school, uh, our, our, our partners staff as well. Uh, kids lined up in the, um, in, in the field. Everyone was calm, everyone was cool. They were lined up perfectly. Uh, the, two crew, the two engines that came, Hooker and Main Street, uh, came almost instantly. Um, and they even had time to communicate with the parents and reassure us as we're standing around wondering where we could pick up our kids. So uh, they were really able to communicate with us as well. So anyway, I just wanted to give kudos to, um, uh, to the uh, staff at Krieger for, uh, you know, I, I know that these safety drills um, are time consuming. There's a lot of hard work goes into planning them and to, to practicing uh, the, the, uh, what needs to be done in the moment. And, um, uh, clearly, that work was done <laughs> because uh, that uh, that went as absolutely as, as smoothly as could possibly go. Uh, 
I wanted to just give a final uh, co commendation to uh, the work of the uh, Construction Facilities uh, Committee, uh, Board Member Long, Dr. Rosser, uh, Mr. Colby, our partners at, at CPL, um, for uh, giving us a really exciting glimpse of the future. Um, you know, uh, whether it's Proposition 1 and or Proposition 2, either way, um, good things are coming. Uh, and I share uh, Dr. Watson's enthusiasm and excitement, maybe a little bit of the impatience too, at least that's, that's <laughs> because we, we want these things now <laughs> for our kids, right? Uh, so I, 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 I just wanted to give a, a sort of echo or give an amen <laughs> to your comments, Dr. Watson. You know, we want this, we want all this stuff now. Um, and we, and we know we need to work systematically and be patient too. Uh, but thank you so much to the committee um, and to uh, CPL uh, for getting us to this point. And it's exciting to see what's going to be happening in the near future uh, uh, for, for, for the district. So uh, thank you. Um, I'm going to ditto what um, Dr. Reeser said about the Pioneer Post. Um, it really it was it's impressive. Um, and definitely um, <coughs> lots of good information, um, you know, right, hot off the wire kind of stuff. Um, and also echo, echo your sentiments with regard to the uh, buildings and uh, building and construction, facilities and construction committee and the work that has been going on. Um, I really, um, tonight, really got a sense that uh, they're not just the architect and the you know, construction management company that they really do have their heart in this um, and that it is for the students. And um, I agree with Felicia, <laughs> can't, just can't happen fast enough. Um, I, I kind of feel like um, we're decades behind um, the rest of the districts in this county, and it's really time for that to change. Um, I think that's all. So I just have a few quick comments. Um, the first one is I just want to thank uh, Dr. Rabinowitz as well as, or Mrs. Rabinowitz and Dr. Rosser for um, reigniting the technology committee. Um, it's definitely something that needs to happen and continue to be a discussion um, for our students and our faculty in the district, um, as well as uh, the basketball game on I think it was Saturday night. Uh, we didn't. We could only stay for about one quarter, but man, was it was it exciting against Lords. Uh, they were like neck and neck for the quarter that we were there, and um, we had to leave uh, right about halftime. And just being able to go onto Facebook and see some of the posts that were posted by the Poughkeepsie Pioneer Sports page, uh, we won. And but it was a great game. We won by I think it was uh, four points, but it was it was pretty awesome. Um, also, the marking period has ended, so I hope all parents and students are happy with their grades um, and feel that they have accomplished a lot this last marking period. Um, and uh, I just want to let Dr. Rosser know that I have been sharing his superintendent's brief with um, people that live outside of the Poughkeepsie City School District as well as board members in other districts and they are very impressed. Uh, they really like to see the positive um, information that our district is providing to the public, uh, the public being anybody that is willing to accept the information. Um, from our area because we do have such, you know, historically districts outside of our area look at us in a negative light and it's really changing the way people are thinking about us. So thank you. Um, I just have a quick comment and I just, I just need clarity. Um, it's about a posting that's out. I don't know if I could talk about it on the floor. I'm not talking about a specific person. No, th no that's fine. It's just a posting. Okay. So um, the posting for the middle school principal, mm -hmm. is it supposed to be an SDL or an SBL? It can be an, an SDL is school district leadership, SBL is school building leadership. So I would need, are you saying that 
Are you saying that the... So which one should it be in the posting? It should be SBL. Okay. So we need to make that correction then. Um, it says SDL. I just wanted to bring that to your attention. And then the other thing that I'd like to do is um, I, I showed up at the girls' JV game yesterday, um, and I just really want to thank the coach. The other team got stuck in traffic coming from Dobbs Ferry, so we waited about an hour and a half for the team to come. Um, I don't know what's going on with our sports and our girls, um, I, and I just got to give an extra shout out. We had five JV girls play the entire game because that was the team. And, and I'm telling you, I, I felt, I wish I could have went out there and played. Um, <laughs> but you could just see like they, they were so tired. And I, I just got to tell you, um, Coach Tolbert, I got, I got to give props because she, she kept pushing them. I know they slept very well last night. So um, I was a little disappointed about the crowd, but I get it. We're all busy, and I just happen to have some extra time. But um, anyway, I just want to thank, let them know that things are never left um, unnoticed. And to piggyback with um, board member Martinez Lefford said, the game was absolutely exciting. Um, and I'm looking forward to, um, I'm really going to try to go out and do the bowling and everything else because they are a part of a team that we don't ever speak about. So, and that's that. I don't have anything else. All right, all right. So, there's a couple things going on this week. Let's see. Tomorrow, this is that's the 10th, February 10th. Tomorrow's the last one day for the boys' basketball team. Yeah. So, tomorrow, community, you know, please come out and support our pioneers. Tomorrow is the last home game for our boys' basketball team. That will be here. I believe JV starts at 4.30. No. Boys start at 7 o'clock. Did I get that right, team? I believe we don't I got have it a right. game on the 12th? Hmm? Tomorrow. Tomorrow's the last one. Tomorrow. Home. And it's oh, also home. recognition. It's senior night, right? right. It's hmm? senior night tomorrow night. Yes, also mm -hmm. recognition of our seniors as well. So please, community, come out and support. My apologies, yes. Um, just a, there's a couple things. One, the website is being updated. It's, it's looking really good. Uh, so I, I don't know. Is that you, Mr. Danish Fire? Yeah, it's, it's clean. So I was just looking at some upcoming events, February 10th, 11th, and 12th. We have parent-teacher conferences at all our elementary schools. And, um, and then that's on February 10th, February 11th, parent-teacher conferences at Pace, Pace, PHS, and ELC. We really, we really want to push our parents. When we look at the stakeholders <coughs> in February 12th, it's parent-teacher parent conferences at PMS. So those are half days. Um, th there's been a lot that's going on. I know in the district there were some things that happened today on my, my drive back from Buffalo. I realized um, that I got wind of some, 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 some situations that have happened. And so one of the things that I, 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 I realized resoundingly is that we need all hands on board. We need the stakeholders. We need parents. That is not the role and function only of the school district to, um, to, to, to quote unquote, to raise children. That we need parents to really partner with us to get this thing done. And um, some of the issues and things that we hear and see that happen a lot within our district are happening because we don't have, and I see Ms. Norwood here um, as a, the, uh, an active PTA uh, parent. We really got to get our parents more involved and partner with us to help us help them um, with, with their children with disciplinary issues and behavior issues, there are the whole trauma-informed care piece, there's um, a variety of issues and, and we just need, we need all hands on board. Teachers cannot do it alone and it's not the role and function necessarily of a teacher to even, to even deal with those, to even deal with, with that per se. I mean, it would be great if the teachers could just teach, and, um, but, but that's not our reality. And so there, there are things that are happening that supersede the role and function of a principal or of a teacher, and we need the, the we need greater parent participation to help us um, help our help our students. Um, I, I, I uh, commend Dr. Rosser on that. The superintendent briefs. I don't know how you do it twice a week. I still don't know. I mean, with all the time you played with, with all that um, continues to go on. But we need that face. We need the the, the, the continuous because you don't just report on good things or positive things you report, I think, across the board, and I think that's a good piece. I always say the good, the bad, and the ugly. 
and um, and you include those pieces. So I just want to say kudos to you and and, um, and uh, your team and Erwin or whomever uh, works with you on those things. So we want to continue that. We need to push. If, if I don't know if we can get a message to whoever oversees the Boas yearbook. Um, we, we, we don't want to find ourselves in the situation we were last year where they didn't have sufficient dollars and then just, just a, a variety of things. We want to be proactive. It means we have to fundraise. Um, we do what we have to do. It's, it's When I was in high school, we fundraised for the yearbook. So, no, you know, no one could hand us um, a, a $10,000 or $20,000 check. We, we would fundraise, sell flowers, Valentine's Day, all kinds of things, do parties, with, you know. And uh, we, would, we would raise and generate money. So we want to make sure that we're proactively thinking about these things and that um, anything the board can do to assist in, 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 in those type of things, we need to do it proactively planning. So um, uh, board, board clerk Torres, if we can contact them, because last year we, we, um, we were able to assist this year we're not in a position to do that, but we don't want our students not to receive yearbooks because they cannot afford them. Yeah. That just should not be occurring. So the interim director of special projects who, here, who is here in the crowd, Ms. Christine Jean Greco, will be leading that charge from okay. my administration. Perfect. She'll That's be working with the advisor, getting an understanding of what funds they have raised thus far, if there's things that need to be done in the fundraising area. As part of her responsibility, she'll be assisting and making sure that that happens for our children this year. That's excellent. Uh, that's pretty that much it. There's probably other things that I could say, but for now, I think that's, that's sufficient. Is there a motion to adjourn out of our regular board meeting for today, uh, February 5th? I'm looking forward to the next board meeting, Dr. Austin. You will be doing the, the financial plan at the next board meeting? February 19th. Yes. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Yeah. So we want to we wanna get folks out here. We want. Um, <clears throat> To ensure that we publicize that one, as we did the other uh, presentation that you did, that you uh, conducted um, when you did the strategic plan, we want to. I, I see some flyers are still out here in the front. So I see that we too. want to take those down. I took them down. They, they like my picture. I took them down. <laughs> took them down. Okay, we want to get the, well, another one. Let's give um, Chris a hand. He, he comes through like a trooper. He does a lot behind the scene. He does a lot in front of the scene, and. Um, yeah, you're a good man, and, and, and you're an intricate, integral part of the Poughkeepsie City School District, and this board really appreciates you. We appreciate all that you do, and um, we want you to know we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. All right, Amazing. that being said, again, uh, Ms. Rabinowitz, thank you so much for the presentation. Um, CSEA is in the house. We see you, and um, <laughs> yeah, we're super glad that you're here also. I don't know who else is here, we, uh, but... Um, we're going to adjourn out of this regular meeting, um, and we'll see you all February 19th. Is there a motion? 